All right. This morning, I wanted to uh, mix a couple of things because the, uh, it has been on my mind for quite some time. But because things are developing uh, in s so rapidly, uh, this world is going crazy. Uh, we uh, need to comply with the government uh, orders, and 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 we we don't want to do anything. So we we are fine here. We can allocate twenty five people here. Uh, spreading around, they say. So maybe you bring. Uh, have to measure. How <laughs> it's getting a bit silly, but we want to comply with everything because we respect and honor the government. That's what the Bible says to do that. So we will do that, not out of fear, but we are we are uh, happy to to comply with the regulations. Uh, so why why we are not afraid? But the Bible teaches to respect our God-given governments, right? So uh, we are going to read, I'm going to read now Psalm 91. And uh, this is a very powerful psalm that God has assured us of his protection. It's very powerful. And before that, we're going to, uh, I'm going to pray and you, by you agreeing with me, then we're praying together. It's about thanking God. Uh, let's, I'm going to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray more, we declare our faith in the healing at the cross of Calvary. We declare that you have decreed in your word that you will protect us from any pestilence, that you will protect us and bless us. And Lord, we just need to trust you to have faith and we rebuke and resist anything that's not of God who wants to come against us. We and our families are protected and we thank you for that this morning in the name of Jesus. And we let go of any intimidation or fear in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 91. Security of the one who trusts in the Lord. Uh, it's about trusting in the Lord. Faith. Not without faith or with fear or unbelief. That's not. We don't have to qualify. We just have, have to trust God and have faith in him. Okay. We have authority to declare the word of God. So that, that's what we're doing now. Uh, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He delivers us. He already has. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. His faithfulness. He is faithful. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. So you have to believe it, take it, declare it, put it in your heart. That's a seed. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you. Okay? Give you an angel here in charge of you as well. See? <laughs> to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample down. And now listen to that. This is so important to realize because God wants our trust, our faith. That's how we receive all this. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. How do we show love to God? By trusting him. 
by considering, by obeying his word. That's how we, so it says, because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. That's a powerful hymn. That's the Old Testament. Now on top of that, we have the Holy Spirit. And the cross brought healing. So we have even now authority. That was in the Old Testament where people had no spiritual authority. They did not have it. But we have now spiritual authority. So we can declare, we can stand on the word of God ourselves in the authority of the name of Jesus. So that's much more than the psalm gives us. But still, it's God's promise. When we disobey God, we are not showing love to him. Obedience and trust in God will always make God's promise real and effective. So disobedience takes away faith, confidence in God's word. Disobedience brings unbelief. So, you know, if you look around in this world, what is ruling today is fear. The virus is bad, but fear is causing much more, much more harm <coughs> than the virus itself. So, Satan's counterfeit to faith, that's fear. Fear. When you have fear, you cannot have faith. That's why we need to trust in the Lord totally, 100%. Don't make this earth your home. Did you know this is not our home? If you think this is your home, your, our home is in heaven already now. We don't own anything. I have a house, but it's not mine. God has given it to me. I'm a steward. Everything belongs to God. Even my life belongs to God. We don't own anything. This is not our home here. <coughs> our home is in heaven. It's already prepared for us. God sees us there already. Because he's, he's beginning from the end. And we are just stewards. It all belongs to God. Uh, uh, it comes to mind a, a story from that when Julie and I went to um, America the second time in 98 or something. Uh, we were there with a very uh, big ministry in America uh, uh, traveling around and we met one man who was a, had been a missionary in, uh, in Papua New Guinea. And I'm going to make the story short because it's quite, quite amazing. So he was a missionary in uh, Papua New Guinea and he had all kinds of people around him. He was the teacher, the doctor, the, the, the uh, shop, he sold things. He, w he did everything there. He was the all-round man there, the church, everything. So uh, he had a, a pineapple plantation, right? And uh, every time before the pineapples were ripe, they disappeared, they would be stolen. And so this man always was telling the indigenous there, you are stealing mine, that's not here. So he was always complaining and getting angry at them and getting angry and complaining and threatening them. And even he even put a, a German shepherd there to, to, to get anybody who would come near there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was telling the story how angry he was for weeks and months, he was so angry. Until one day, the penny dropped. And then he said, oh God, uh, I'm getting angry. I'm supposed to be the pastor here and shepherd these people, and I'm constantly angry at these people. So God kind of put it on his heart, and he said to them, he spoke to them one day and said, you know what? I'm sorry I've been angry at you, and uh, I just want to tell you that this pineapple plantation doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. It's God's. So I shouldn't have gotten angry. And so he left it at that. And then you know what happened? They never stole again. Because they knew that was not from the missionary, that was God's possession. <laughs> so they didn't go steal anymore, because it belongs to God. Isn't that a, 
that is an interesting, uh, and that is the same with us. When we get possessive of things, that's when greed and fear and all of that comes in. You have to be loose. God is in control. We are only stewards here. It doesn't matter, possessions or anything. And even our lives belong to Jesus. If he wants to take me home, I'm ready any time. You know, my life belongs to him. Anyway, I thought I'd share this pineapple story. <laughs> so we are experiencing difficult times, uh, but we are not to allow fear to overpower us. Don't allow that to overpower you. We belong to God, we are his possession. And he is responsible for us. Do you, do you know that? He is responsible. He will protect us and keep us until the day Jesus comes back to take us with him. Either we put our trust in God or we will give credit to sickness, pestilences, lies and deceit. We don't want to give credit to that. It's there, okay. It's around, fine. But it has nothing to do with me. I trust God. I stand in the word of God. This world has been overtaken by fear. The coronavirus, the climate change, and so on. These are the works of the devil. Fear comes from the devil. And there's a lot of people who are not saved. They don't know what they're doing. We are not to see all this just in the natural. Fear comes from the devil, and lies and deceit are the traits of Satan. Look at Mark 1, 40 to 45. And there comes to him a leper, begging him and kneeling, saying to him, to Jesus, if you are willing, you have power to cleanse me. And having been moved with compassion, having stretched out his hand, he touched him and says to him, I desire it, be cleansed at once. And immediately the leprosy left him completely and he was cleansed. And sternly charging him, he immediately trust, thrust him out and said to him, see to it that you say nothing to anyone but go show yourself as evidence to the priest and present that offering with reference to your cleansing, which Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But having gone out, he began to be proclaiming in public a great deal and to be blazing abroad the account, so that no longer he was able to enter a city, but was outside in uninhabited places. And they came on coming to him, to Jesus, from everywhere. So. In the Old Testament, when somebody touched a leper, they would get leprosy. In the New Testament, Jesus touched the leper and the leper got healed. It's the other way around. That's why the Bible says, go and preach the gospel, heal the sick. We are not to be afraid of the sick. We are not to be afraid of the pestilence. It goes the other way around. You can touch people and they might be healed. Actually, that is God's command, God, God's commission. Go preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. That's what we ought to be doing and not being victims of anything like that. Okay. So God has given us his word for us to be spiritually in authority. So we have authority. You have the word of God, and we stand on the word of God, and we have the authority. While Jesus conquered the forces of darkness, this evil presence is still on this earth and is activated when we submit to it. We are not to submit to anything from darkness. We are to submit only to the word of God. Accepting, embracing, and submitting to fear, worries, anxiety, and ungodly ways, and sickness, whatever it is, that means giving the defeated devil more credit than we give to God's word. We give more credit to the devil than to God if we are not careful. Generally, Christians live with a mixture of light and darkness, fear and faith. And that's what's happening today. I know Christians who are really fearful, really scared. That's not a basis for, for God's protection. God wants to trust him. Fear and unbelief, that, that's a blockage. It is actually astonishing that Christians who embrace darkness don't realize that what they are doing. When we decide to consider all these things at these ungodly ways, we accept it and becomes a part of our lives. It is not God's plan for a Christian to live in darkness. And yet the majority of Christians live with darkness, forgetting who they are and what they have inherited. And that's why we need to discern. Do you see? We need to know, we need to discern light and darkness. Some people don't, they've got a gray area and they are just 
floating around without, no, we need to have be clear. What is light, what is darkness? What is from God, what is from the enemy? We need to discern that. You will discern it better and better the more you know the word of God. But we need to know that, that when, when we see darkness, we just say no, uh, and we just step away from it. And we need to do that constantly, like a policeman. You just have to stop and block anything that's not from God. You have to constantly be alert. That's spiritually being spiritually alert. So we need to discern between light and darkness. First discerning darkness and then saying no to the works of the devil. See, the devil, Satan, is called the beast. The devil is the beast. Either you have uh, God or you have the beast. The beast is mean. He is evil. The beast is the one who takes the toilet paper away from the, from the shelves in the, in the supermarket. That's the beast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's, it's, a, it's a, a silly joke. Okay. So here are some thoughts. Living with fear is submitting to Satan. People don't think like that. Living with fear is submitting to Satan. Did you think about that? Do you know how many Christians live with fear and guilt and uh, everything else? They don't realize they're submitting to Satan. Fear steals your faith. It's Satan's counterfeit to God's love. Fear always brings unbelief and doubt. It means disobeying God. You just don't trust God and put your trust in Satan. Really? God cannot bless disobedience. Embracing fear means not trusting Jesus and his word. Fear affects our spirituality and also brings sickness in our bodies. Having faith in Christ for salvation and not believing or obeying his word makes us double-minded. To be, no, believe in Jesus, being saved, and not believing in his word, to receive and to keep our faith, it's being double-minded, because you are half spiritual and half in the natural. Christians with unbelief disqualify themselves from receiving God's promises. That's in James chapter 1. He says, if you are double-minded, you will not get anything from the Lord. So we need to just, just keep our hearts on uh, uh, on the word of God with Jesus and not let go of this. Our inheritance, who we are in Christ, the love of God. So just in case any of you have believed the lie about what they call global warming, I wanted to speak about that because some people, they don't understand, they get fearful about it. Or climate change, this is all, all crazy. I will inform you about it. Of course, there is climate change. It always has been climate change. Even before cars and airplanes industry happened, there was climate change. Why? Because of our planet system and the weather changes caused by sin entering the world. This world was not like that <coughs> before the fall. After the fall, then all changed, right? But it all has to do with the uh, plan of God. Imagine somebody finds in the remote forest a clock. It's ticking. Somebody finds a clock. Never seen one. It is incomprehensible. The person has never seen a clock. This is not a fruit or a stone. It's something somebody has designed. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Somebody has designed that. If we look at the universe, we can find this clock easily. Just take our solar system. It is absolute perfection. Scientists can tell you when the next eclipse or major event in our solar system will take place, even many, many, many years ahead. That's perfection. That's not an accident, an explosion and everything, you know. Perfection. Somebody made the clock. There is a, a, a creator. And, and the solar system is perfect. And without realizing it, this, the scientists are putting their trust in creation. Did you, do you realize that? They know the perfection of the solar system and they doubt that there's a creator. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Isn't that crazy? 
there are seasons in our solar system. Okay, there are seasons. Sometimes this, I, I'm not a scientist, but I, I, I know I've known that there are seasons. So the, the the temperature of this planet will fluctuate a little bit forth and back. We depend on the sun for heat, but not too much heat. Imagine if the sun would be much further away from our planet, we would freeze to death. Is that right? If the if the so, uh, the the sun would go further away from us, wow! You don't need a freezer there. You just it's just one right here. If the sun would be closer to us, we'll be scorched. Is that right? Imagine the sun comes closer. Boy, uh, we are gone. We're in the oven. <laughs> so the sun has seasons which impact our planet. God keeps it all according to his word, to his plan. We humans cannot determine the temperature of our planet because it depends on God's creation, not on us. We can pollute the air, we, can change, we cannot change the temperature of our planet. So keeping the air clean, yes. Respecting God's creation, yes. But we haven't got the power or the capacity to change the temperature of this planet. This is idiocy, this is crazy. This is just impossible for people, that because that is a scheme, a scam. This is uh, control, this is globalism. You see, there's a lot of stuff behind all of that. They want to control people. And the globalists, they have an agenda. So it puts fear on people. Fear controls people. So I'm sharing this with you because I want you to understand. Can you see now, for instance, all these poor kids, they think they're going to live only 10 years more, and that's the end of it. To put fear in little children like that, I mean, that is devilish, you know. And they don't even know what they're doing. They've got no proof. They've got no scientific proof. In, in, in fact, the real scientists, they tell you the completely opposite. The temperature of this planet hardly has moved because it always has moved a little bit up and down. Sometimes was really, in the 70s, they said this is the ice time. You're going to all freeze to death in the 70s, remember? Now they come with this, but it's all control. It's all politics control, the globalists. And that has to do with the UN and all this. I could go on and on, but I will leave it at that. But to to put fear on people, that is control. Peop when people are controlled, it's because of fear. And so uh, Jesus is going to come back, and when, when Jesus comes back at the rapture, this world is still in order. Okay? It, I don't know when Jesus comes back to take us, but it does not matter. The fact is that all these, what they are uh, informing, the world about this climate change, the global warming, all these 10 more years to, to live, then it, everything is gone. And that's all plain lies. There's no basis for it. So we need to stop allowing this world to influence. I'm not suggesting that you've been influenced, but we need to be above these things. We, we trust the word of God, we live by the word of God, and on this earth, things come and go, and there's always people who are unsaved, they are fools. Who, whoever does not know the word of God, does know the truth, they are fools, because they are acting by impulse, by logic, by greed, by politics, by all kinds of things. And all this is done, is done with an agenda. And we are not going to uh, be worried about it, we're not going to be concerned. But th what concerns me is that they, they are making people's lives miserable. There are young kids today who say, why should I go to school and learn and 10 years is all gone? They lose motivation. They, they get depressed. That to me is the crime, you know. But they don't care. They just do it and go for it. And, and they're get going stronger every time. And that I these are the works of the devil. Fear is not from God. Fear will say, trust in the Lord, don't worry, you trust me. But this is people without 
Christ. Now people around us have to say, wow, hey, this, this Christian, he's not fearful, he's joyful, um, not concerned about any of these things. <coughs> we need to display that. You know, because people need to see that, that uh, the life of Christ is powerful. We have the life of Christ in us and we're not going to allow anything around us to steal our joy, <coughs> our peace. We will not allow that. We should not allow that. We're in the middle of this, okay. We'll come and go, doesn't matter. And people are already scared what's going to happen in the economy and all of that. We are in God's economy, don't worry. We are not uh, depending on the economy of the Australia or the world. We are in God's economy. And whatever happens, we are not to be worried. Because all what we have to do is be here to serve God. That's all. And he will take care of us. 